When it comes to drilling a glass aquarium, you need a diamond tip hole saw that can carve its way through the glass. Here are some of the tools that I used when I had to drill an aquarium. And you'll notice that the hole saw matches the bulkhead size, as well as the wooden hole saw has to match my diamond bit. Now here's a 40 gallon breeder that I got from Petco. It's very important that you know if it's tempered or not, because tempered glass, if drilled, can shatter. Instead, it's much better to find out from the manufacturer how they've made it and look for labels or any kind of warnings or indications. If the bottom is tempered, you may have to drill the back or the sides of the aquarium instead. The next thing is to mark where the bulkheads are going to be located. Too close to the edge and the tank may crack. It's very important that you find a good sweet spot to leave some material around the edges. Mark those spots with a black sharpie because you need that information to stay there when you start applying water during the drilling process. In this case I'm using a rubber dam and this will hold the water inside during the drilling process. I also made a jig that will hold the drill bit from wandering when I first start the hole. It's very important that that bit stay in place for the first minute or so as it carves a groove into the glass. Here I used a helper, my son, to hold the pink foam in place so that way it would locate it and keep that bit exactly where I needed it and I didn't rely on doing this all by myself. Having a helper hold that pink foam in place and you can use something else, a wooden board, a piece of sheetrock, you just need something to keep that drill bit from wandering when it first starts carving into the glass because otherwise it'll dance across the surface. It'll take about 45 seconds to a minute to create a nice groove and at that point you'll be able to remove this template out of your way and continue the drilling process without this obstacle that's blocking your visibility. Now that the tank has been scored appropriately, I can go ahead and continue the drilling process in the glass. And the trick is keeping your drill very stable. Don't let it lean to the left or right. Ask your helper to help you keep it focused. If you can, maybe a level, if the drill has one, will give you a bubble so you know where you're situated, so you're drilling straight down. Don't apply pressure, don't push down. Just let the bit gently carve its way through the glass. This process will take about five minutes until it finally comes through. When you see water dripping out the bottom, you know you're getting very close to the piece cutting through completely. Now if you're drilling through the back of the tank and you're drilling toward the front panel instead of straight down over an open area, the piece of glass dropping through could ship the opposite side of the aquarium. So be sure to put a towel in there to catch that piece as it falls. In this case I drilled the bottom so it fell down onto the lawn and it wasn't a problem. The rubber dam is super handy because it creates a little bit of a vacuum on the glass and keeps the water where it belongs. Uh, this was given to me by a friend, but there's another method and I'll show it to you here. All you need is some plumber's putty and a styrofoam cup and a utility knife. Go ahead and knead the dough and create a ring, which you would place around where you're about to drill your hole. Here's an example on a piece of raw glass that I had nearby. Once you've created your little rubber ring, you're going to cut the styrofoam cup with the utility knife to create a collar or a dam. As you can see, this is a very inexpensive solution and the dam doesn't have to be very tall. I made it kind of tall in this video, but it could have just been one inch and it would have suffi uh, sufficed. Plumber's putty is non-toxic. You have nothing to fear and you're just using it sort of like Play-Doh to create water around where you're going to drill so it stays wet. I've seen people try to drill holes through glass using a spray bottle and squirting it, but I'd much rather just have it cut right through a pool of water where the water is constantly rinsing the bit as it carves its way through the glass. So once you've got your styrofoam cup pushed into the putty, you can then make sure the putty is sealed all the way around by just mashing it and pouring some water. If it holds water, it's ready to go. No leaks, perfect. Next important point, make sure that your drill bit is not drilling at an angle. You want it to drill straight up and down. That's why you need a spotter to help make sure you've got it correct. We're gonna move on to the second hole. Same principles, principle as before. Add some water, put the template in place, 
get your helper to hold the template where it belongs so the drill bit won't wander. And spend about 45 seconds to a minute carving a groove in the glass for hole number two. Once that's been accomplished, you can go ahead and take the template out of your way and continue the drilling process. It may be a little bit hard to see where you're supposed to put the bit, but you can kind of get a feel for it until you get it into the groove. And then this drill process this time took about five minutes to carve through. One battery charge did the entire process, but if you have two batteries, even better. You don't want to rush this. You just let it take its time and work its way through the glass. If you push too hard, if you go too fast, you'll crack the tank and you'll have to buy a new aquarium. When I was making this video, we were being eaten alive by mosquitoes. That was no fun. So, and you know, you have to do this work outside. It's pretty loud. I wouldn't really want to do it indoors myself because of the water going everywhere. You might have a dry room or a spot in your basement where you can do this work. But the nice thing is, this is going to take you 10, 15 minutes tops to do the entire project, and then your tank will be drilled and ready to use with bulkheads. And having a tank that has bulkheads installed is so much better than using a hang-on-back system that leaves an opportunity for failure if it breaks the siphon. We're about to go through. I can tell in this video that my drill is leaning a little bit. I got lucky, but it really should have been straight up and down. That's it, there's not much to it. The hole saw has to match the size of your bulkhead and they're often sold in millimeters. So once you know that, then you'll be able to drill the right size hole yourself. Thank you for watching and a new video comes out later this week.